Um, I would like to welcome everyone to today's webinar. Um, I am very happy to welcome all of you to this event where we are going to provide you with insights into the role of simulation of oil management for transmission using moving particle simulation. My name is Alina Dubula from the company EngineSoft and I will be your host for this event. That being said, I suggest we dive right in and have a look at the agenda before we move on to the introduction of the speakers. Today, we have three presentations planned for you by two different speakers, whom I will introduce to you in a second. This session's focus lies on the fourth presentation that you can see on the agenda right here and should take about one hour, just depending on how much time we will spend on the Q&A session in the end. If you would like to contribute any questions to the Q&A session, then please feel free to communicate us your questions in writing through the chat and we will try to answer as many questions as possible at the end of the presentation. Now, I would like to move on and briefly introduce today's two key speakers to you. First, I would like to go ahead and introduce our guest speaker, Mattia Porchetta. He currently works as oil management engineer for Tremec in Belgium and will provide us with industry insights into the role of simulation on how to improve the oil management in transmissions for high performance applications. Mattia, thank you for joining us here today. Perhaps you'd like to give a small wave so everyone know who's, knows who I'm talking to. And I really hope I got your last name slightly right. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. The other speaker I would like to introduce to you is Simon Habecke, who works as application engineer here at Engines of Germany. He has prepared an introductory presentation on particle works and its moving particle simulation, as well as an overview of particle works applications in powertrain and drivetrain for you. Welcome, Simon. We are glad to have you too. If you want to give a small wave also, so everyone knows who you are. Hello, everyone. Thank you. All right then, I believe that is all the introductory information you need to know before we dive into the technical part of the webinar. I would now like to transfer the moderation rights to Simon Habecke so he can get started on the first presentation. There, there you go. Yes, thank you. So I will share my screen, which you should see now so as alina said i will take you through a a brief introduction of particle works and the underlying methodology the moving particle simulation and then also present some uh, recent use cases that have already been presented before and then hand over uh, to Mattia, who will tell us a little bit about uh, tremex application of of particle works in their development process so particle works is a particle based cfd tool which uses a numerical method called the, the moving particle simulation the moving particle simulation um, was originally proposed by professor koshizuka who's a professor at the university of tokyo at the graduate school of engineering he is also a co-founder of promotech software which is the developing company behind particle works and he proposed this method basically as an evolution to the smooth particle hydrodynamics um, in 1996. so for those of you who are familiar with cfd in principle you might be familiar with the so-called finite volume method, which is um, an Eulerian um, CFD methodology where you basically discretize the fluid volume with a numerical grid in, on, on, on which the liquid movement or the fluid movement um, is solved and simulated. Instead, with the MPS, so the moving particle simulation, um, it used a, a particle-based approach, so that's the, the definition of a Lagrangian approach, um, where the liquid is discretized, so the fluid is discretized by a set of uh, dynamic particles. So basically, we can understand our particles as dynamic calculation points 
um, which represent our fluid and these fluid particles they interact not only with each other but only of course with the other boundary conditions that we can impose on the on the simulation model and also the mps just as most of the of the final volume methods um, also approximates the navier stokes equations as the fundamental governing equations in computational fluid dynamics so particle works is a tool that a set uses the the mps since we do not need to extract the the fluid volume um, but instead can discretize the liquid with our particles we're talking about a, a mesh free method which is especially suitable to simulate free surface flows and related problems like liquid um, sloshing or liquid jets and then of course as we see here in this animation we can also simulate the interaction not only with rigid bodies but then there would also be other applications um, where we can potentially extend the model to also introduce sand into the view box for example which in real life of course we want to avoid or also include flexible bodies into the into the system and then what we see here on the right hand side shows particle works capability to also simulate highly viscous or non-Newtonian fluids such as grease. So the type of applications which we can handle with this sort of, of methodology or range from oil splashing and lubrication of gearboxes and transmissions and we will learn later more about that from, from Mattia. Then in the overall topic of lubrication of course we can also have a closer focus on on bearing itself then with the same methodology we can also um, handle certain applications in the in the field of engine or piston lubrication and also cooling so this actually covers both conventional internal combustion engines as well as um, electric engines which nowadays can also be or are more and more internally cooled by by all jets then in a slightly different industry in the energy sector we can also perform simulation of um, hydro turbines which is particularly efficient for turbines like a pelton or a banky turbine so where we also have free surface flows and then more focused on the on the process or chemical industry we can also simulate highly viscous or non-newtonian fluids ranging from chocolate glue cement or grease just to give you some some examples so now we see all these nice animations which uh, show basically some of the visualization options that particle works can provide us during the post-processing so in the next slides i will give you a very very brief overview um, to give you some some impressions about how such a simulation is potentially set up so to give you an idea of the of the simulation workflow So the first step um, actually takes part before the simulation. So with the geometric preparation of the model, which we then import into particle works. In principle, we do not need to perform any larger simplifications, but basically we just export each part like a shaft or a gear that later in the simulation model we want to uh, set with a separate kinematic motion into a separate file and then export these parts as uh, separate STL or OBJ files which are let's say the formats that particle works can read so inside of particle works we basically import the non-simplified geometries then in the next step we define the analysis conditions so that includes uh, first of all of course the the material properties 
um, which characterize our um, fluid. For oil, this would of course be the density, kinematic viscosity, some surface tension parameters. Then we of course also need to define the, the kinematics, so the motion of our shafts and gears. And then to introduce the, the oil or the liquid into our um, simulation model, we can either define or actually can define both in the same model, define a filling plane, which can introduce a, an initial fill level into the simulation model, and then also create inflows and outflows, which basically can introduce new fluid, new oil into the simulation, and also take simulation out of uh, oil out of the simulation. And therefore, this also enable us to model forced lubrication systems. Then, of course, since we're talking about a, a simulation tool, we also need to set some numerical parameters like the time step, which is typically estimated by our rotational speed and the particle size, which we are using for the simulation, plus some other numerical settings, which we won't cover in, in this webinar. So after we imported the geometry, defined our kinematic conditions, we perform the post-processing. So during the, oh, sorry, the pre-processing, of course, comes first. So we perform the pre-processing during which the geometrical model is first automatically translated into the internal calculation model, which is used by the actual simulation. And then also the initial particle placement, for example, um, during the fill operation is also performed so that our gearbox um, might also already be pre-filled with, with oil particles. Then during the actual simulation, we of course perform the calculation, which will calculate our liquid movement. We can uh, use one or depending on the model size, multiple GPUs. We can also leverage CPU clusters while according to our experience, the use of GPUs is uh, more efficient. The software runs both on Windows and also on, on Linux. And then now coming to the aforementioned post-processing. This of course gives us the, the insights we are, we are looking for by using the simulations, which can be the visualization of the oil flow we can export animations, then in principle also evaluate the churning losses and also of course measure flow rates and the oil distribution in different parts of the, of the housing. So the advantage such a meshless simulation approach gives us is the overall reduction of the simulation time since we do not need to simplify the geometry, we do not need to perform any meshing, and it's very robust and easy to implement complex kinematics. So now coming to some applications that have been presented in webinars or at conferences before, I will just give you some, some key points. I wanted to give you a brief peek into what was presented by Ducati uh, course at the CIE conference last year. And in this case study, Ducati presented their application to evaluate and then also optimize different nozzle configurations with the aim to, to maximize the HTC distribution on the undercrown um, of a motorcycle piston. And if you scan the QR code on the bottom right side, you will come to a link where you can view, I think, a trailer or a, a, a review of the, of the actual presentation. Then a similar application from a, a say, software perspective um, in terms of what was simulated was also presented at the last CA conference. 
in collaboration with Ricardo, but this time the aim was to simulate the oil internal oil cooling of a electric motor and then with the target to compare the winding temperatures at different locations also with experimental values and in that simulation workflow particle works was used to simulate the oil distribution and hdc distribution on the windings due to the oil jets which are sprayed from the from the rotor shaft to finally then calculate um, the, the resulting temperatures in the windings with the help of an fe tool and in the result of um, this case study um, we were also provided with some absolute um, values regarding the difference between experimental values and measurements which were below the requirement of five degrees celsius so this gave some confidence and validation into the use of particle works for for such applications so now i will come to the um, last case study which was presented by comer interest industries i think at the cae conference 2019 or actually 2018 um, where the objective was to simulate the old distribution in a coupling gearbox between a electric motor between an axle uh, of, a, of a wheel loader and the aim was to compare the old distribution in different operating conditions different like the mounting position and also the um the operating speed um and finally to assess the bearing lubrication in all these different operating conditions. So in here, they not only did a, a visual comparison of let's say the oil flow patterns, but also evaluated the, let's say the, the, the qualitative lubrication of the different bearing positions uh, with the help of a qualitative scale and in there we found or comer actually found that there was a very good correlation between experiments and tests for this type of gearbox so just by the uh, coloring we can see that just by the coloring we can see that there a, was a very good correlation between an experiments and tests and my personal highlight is this sort of flooding of this bearing which could be identified both in the simulations and the experiments so this would be my part of today's webinar for the for the moment and i'll be glad to to hand over to matthias to learn something new about the use of particle works in the transmission or and the transmission development. So, hello everyone, and uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining the, the webinar. Uh, as Alina presented me, I'm uh, a member of the development team at Remek Belgium, and uh, actually during the last three years, I've been mainly responsible for uh, the oil management in our products. Uh, today, I'm going to present a, a case study that's representative of, I will say, one of the very first application of the MPS method uh, to our products. Hope you can see my presentation. Um, before going into the technical uh, details, I'd like to quickly introduce uh, our company. So with Tremec, actually Tremec is a, a drivetrain and transmission solution company. It's part of the QO group. Uh, we have three facility uh, with uh, our headquarter in uh, Querétaro, Mexico. Then we have one facility in the States, uh, Wixom. And uh, finally, we have our facility here in Belgium at uh, Zidegem. Um, 
Tramek is mainly known uh, for his uh, its manual and uh, dual current transmission uh, more recently for high power and high torque applications. For example, we have the TR9070, that's our inline DCT, and the TR9080, that's our transaxial transmission. The first can be found in the Ford uh, Mustang, uh, the Shelby, uh, GT Shelby 500. And, um, and then uh, the transaxial transmission can be found in both uh, the new uh, Maserati MC20 and the new uh, Corvette C8. Uh, with the market shifting towards electrification, uh, we're also evolving our portfolio. Um, we have some hybrid ready transmission, still based on our TR9070 and TR9080. Uh, we are currently uh, developing a new HDCT transmission that will integrate uh, an electric motor. And we are also uh, working on some e-axles, uh, for example, Hydra, that's a um, hybrid driven axle. For the test case of today, uh, I will refer to the TR9070. So, as I said before, it's uh, our inline DCT transmission. It's seven speed, it can uh, transfer up to 900 uh, Newton meters um, with a maximum input speed of 9,000 RPMs and it can shift in a very very short times of only 80 uh, milliseconds uh, so why is oil management uh, important for our products and in particular for our transmissions well first of all uh, because of lubrication uh, in general we want to avoid uh, the metal to metal contact uh, between uh, mating surfaces uh, as this can lead to excessive wear or even damage a potential failure of the part. Um, not only that, then also the lubricant can act, act as, a, as a coolant. So it's, uh, it's needed to, to dissipate the, the heat generated. There can be different strategies uh, for lubrication. I will not go in detail, but some of these are, for example, splash lubrication or force lubrication. So it's important to have a proper lubrication in, in the transmission, and it's also important to do this uh, efficiently. Um, well, I think that all of us know then that it's very important, for example, nowadays for uh, car manufacturers to, to keep low uh, the fuel consumption, but not only this, um, inefficiency will translate into heat generations. Uh, this can potentially lead to, to high temperature and overheating and hotspot issue. So being efficient means that we can say easily, it's, it's gonna be easier to, to design a proper uh, cooling circuit and uh, cooling system uh, and downsizing also of uh, some of the components like uh, the heat exchanger. One of the last point is then related to actuations and uh, mainly the feeding of, uh, of the hydraulic circuits. Uh, it can be challenging for a uh, high performance application like a sports car uh, because they are capable of very high G uh, level in both uh, lateral and longitudinal directions. So they all will tend to move a lot uh, within the transmission. And um, if this happen in the in the sump pan, uh, where usually the, the pickup uh, of the pump is located, this can lead to oil starvation, uh, causing a suction issue that can potentially uh, lead to a, a disengagement of the clutches and uh, then not being able to transfer the torque and power anymore. Uh, this is of course not acceptable uh, for for, for, for such a product like a sports car, and uh, it will certainly affect the, the drivability of it. All of these items are strictly uh, related one to the other, and one change uh, in one of these can, uh, can affect uh, the other. One of the last points that we focus on is uh, 
the, the, the behavior and uh, the proper functioning of, of the breather. So usually we have an air vent uh, venting system uh, that allows uh, the hot air to, to expand through it and uh, the cold air to, to get in. This is uh, needed to uh, avoid uh, overpressure and overheating uh, inside of the transmission. Of course, you don't want any oil to get out of it uh, because it can be quite risky and even with a potential risk of uh, of fire in case this uh, oil gets in contact with uh, with hot parts outside of the transmission, like uh, the engine and uh, the exhausts. So how do we monitor all of these uh, parameter? Um, well, first of all, we start with CFD. Uh, we extensively use uh, the moving particles uh, uh, method. Uh, this is during the last year. It resulted to be uh, quite effective and uh, it's a powerful tool. It gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, it's very easy to, to, to change the geometry and perform thoughtful experiments like playing with the input conditions and the boundary conditions and we may use this to, to drive the design from from the very early uh, phases of our project then when we come up with a prototype uh, the first thing that we do uh, we perform some tests we initially do this on on benches for example in the picture below we have a very capable bench is a dynamic tilt test bench that we that we use uh, to correlate with the with track data. Uh, this bench allows you, for example, to tilt the transmission along the pitch and roll axis. Uh, of course, these kind of tests are are still quite flexible in the sense that uh, it's easily to 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 reach the transmission and modify it. Then it's also quite easy to to instrument the transmission. For example. Uh, you could also use some transparent features and transparent covers uh, to see through uh, the transmission to catch the oil motion. Although uh, the price from, from the CFD to this kind of test uh, increases uh, and also they, they, will, they will need some preparation because you will need to, to provide all the, the parts and components for the, for the test itself. The final validation of course uh, has to happen in the vehicle. Uh, this, I will say, is the least uh, flexible, uh, flexible uh, kind of test because it's very difficult to access the transmission. Uh, it's time consuming and also very, very expensive. So usually you want to, uh, to, to perform this kind of test during the last uh, phases of or advanced phases of uh, the program. Uh, you don't want to really use this kind of test uh, for the for the initial development of uh, of, of your products because it's going to be uh, very very expensive. So, what happened with our TR 9070? Um, actually, uh, at that time we were not using the moving particle simulations method, so we didn't go through the workflow that I just presented. And we ended up uh, in a very late stage of our program uh, with a suction issue. Um, this happened in the vehicle. Uh, we were testing at Gingerman track and um, it was in a specific corner with a specific driver. What happened was that uh, after uh, the long straight, uh, when breaking into a left corner, um, we experienced some uh, oil starvation in our sampan, and this led to um, a system pressure fault with the with the clutch disengaging and uh, uh, not being able to transfer the torque for for a while. Uh, at the time, uh, we then spent a lot of time trying to solve this issue, uh, performing some track tests. I'm talking about like four uh, to five months without succeeding in it. And uh, we decided then uh, to move uh, uh, to some dynamic tilt test uh, at, uh, at Toyota. 
like we can see here uh, at the top left uh, is a uh, it's video from uh, from the test we performed there uh, where during last one of last sec uh, test section session uh, we were able to test uh, with a transparent feature uh, when going to this test bench uh, we still spent a couple of months uh, trying to solve the issue without su succeeding when we finally de uh, decided to, to to contact engine soft and uh, and perform uh, some uh, simulations uh, of this specific uh, maneuver um, uh, so here at the top uh, you can see the comparison uh, between the test results and the, and the CFT results. I will say that from a qualitative point of view, uh, the odd behavior, it's, uh, it's very, very similar and more or less the same uh, between the two. Uh, but not only that, uh, we uh, only also found uh, very uh, good correlations uh, between the quantitative uh, data uh, from from CFD a dynamic tilt test. For example, in this graph uh, with the red line, uh, we see the measured uh, system pressure, and what we can see is that in correspond correspondence of this point, uh, we had some system pressure ripple, meaning that some air uh, was being sucked uh, until we had a very big uh, system pressure dip. Uh, that was all, that was the actual uh, issue that we were experiencing in uh, in the car. Same uh, if we look at the CFD results. That's the blue line. Uh, in this case, we are not measuring pressure, but we are measuring the inflow to our to our filter. What we notice is that uh, we have a first. Um, flow drop and then uh, a second drop uh, bigger in, uh, in in amplitude and magnitude. Uh, of course there is a, a shift in time uh, between the CFD and the uh, test results. This is mainly due to the fact that um, in the in our transmission um, the, the measurement uh, of the system pressure happens downstream with respect to the point uh, where we are uh, measuring the inflow in the, in the CFD. Another thing that we noticed uh, from, from, from the CFD results was this kind of uh, swirling uh, motion. So the oil ten tended to move along, along the uh, outer walls of the sump pen uh, leading uh, leading the, the the peak application uh, of the pump or of the, the inlet of the filter to be exposed uh, to to air. So what we did, uh, well, as I said, we were in an advanced uh, stage of our program. We we needed to find a quick solution, and uh, we we tried to introduce some uh, guiding features, some fins. Uh, in the pan, in the sump pan, uh, with the idea of forcing the oil uh, to always move uh, towards the, the center of it, uh, where the inlet of the filter was located. We then uh, performed a CFD uh, simulation to, uh, let's say, to compare uh, the standard uh, sump with the modified one and uh, what we saw was that during the critical uh, condition uh, the swirling motion disappeared and uh, the, the inlet uh, of the filter was mainly submerged uh, in oil. We then came up with a first prototype and we went back on the, on the test bench and uh, we had a, a good correlation with what we observed in CFD. Again, here at the top, uh, we have in blue uh, the results from CFD, sorry, uh, the results uh, with a modi modified uh, sump pen from testing. 
uh, as we can see, we still had some system pressure ripple, but the big uh, drop in system pressure that we had with normal uh, sampan disappeared. And this is also reflected in the uh, flow measurement through CFD. Uh, we can see that, uh, for example, looking at the blue line again, uh, with a modified sampan, the magnitude of the drop in flow rate is, uh, is uh, halved uh, with respect to the, the, sun, the standard sampan. So this is one of the um, first uh, application of the moving particle uh, simulation to, to our product. And since then, we always use it in, uh, in our procedure and uh, we found it uh, really, really effective. Uh, this is all for me, and I will give uh, the word uh, back to, to Simon, and thank everyone for, for your attention. Thank you, Mattia. I'm going to go ahead and pass those moderation rights over to Simon. Yes, thank you, Mattia, for these very, very interesting uh, insights. So I will um, draw a brief conclusion of today's <clears throat> webinar before we go over to the Q&A session. So we have seen that um, ParticleWorks provides a robust particle-based workflow and then also enables CFD simulations um, in, the, in the transmission development. And then, as Mattia pointed out, that this use of CFD in the development process allowed to, to solve issues that were very difficult to solve before, and that also in a, in a time effective and, and efficient manner with some good correlations between simulations and tests and overall really breaking down the uh, development time in improving the product by also gaining deeper insights uh, into, the, into the design. So I think that would be it for today's webinar. Um, I don't know if there are already any any questions that came in in the meantime um if it's okay by you i'm just gonna take those moderation rights back for myself so i can yes, share a short q a screen um where is it go all right well, first of all, I want to thank you everyone for your attention and thank you, Mattia and Simon, obviously, for your presentations. Um, as Simon has already stated, we have now reached the end of the session and I did notice that some of you have sent us some questions through the chat. So we would now like to take a few minutes to answer as many of those as we can. Let me just have a quick look to see which questions I will forward to our speakers. One question I see right here is um, how close were you able to get the boundary conditions between testing and simulations in terms of accelerations and variable RPMs? Which one of you would like to take on that question? Can I reply? Well, yeah, actually, ahead. yeah, actually, it's um, you can apply almost uh, exact boundary condition in terms of acceleration and uh, also input speed. It's just a matter of providing like, um, uh, yeah, the, the the exit profile you you get from from testing or or whatever, and uh, you prescribe it to, for example, a certain gear or certain uh, volume. So from that point of view, it's it's really uh, exact, I would say. All right, thank you. I believe that answers that question. Um, another question I see here is um, how long do one of these simulations simulating 10 seconds real time usually take? Would like to answer that one. 
Yes, I think when we did that that first project, just going with particle works on a on a workstation using one GPU, um, I think it was between between two or between two or uh, three days. I don't know what uh, if, if if you want to share any more more recent values about your simulations, Mattia. Since yeah, the, yeah. the software so, has evolved since then, I double checked, and for example, for the for the same simulation, uh, well, of course, then the, the time will depend on, uh, say, the computational power and uh, also the setting it, well, on the simulation itself. So, but for example, for this case, uh, it was 20 hour uh, for five seconds of simulation uh, using two GPU. Uh, with one GPU, it was about 30 hours in this case. Uh, it was 2.5 million particles, and uh, the size of each particle was 1.3 uh, millimeters. For for uh, yeah, in general, I would say it's uh, it's five seconds in one day. But of course, if you um, if you have uh, bigger particles, and sometimes we do use. Uh, and it's not always needed to 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 go with the fine particles. Uh, in, in, in one day, you can uh, even have 10 seconds or more. So it really depends on the test case. But for a full transmission, for a full gearbox, I would say in general, uh, it's around five seconds per day, uh, considering also that the input speed are qu quite high, and this will have an impact on, uh, on the time step. All right. Thank you very much for this, that detailed response. Um, sorry, I'm just looking at all these questions, so that's why I may come off a little bit distracted because there's lots of questions coming in right now, which is great. Um, one more question I'm just going to forward to you guys is um, how complicated is it to set up such a complete gearbox model? How about that? I think that really depends on the on the complexity of the of the gearbox. So with the one I showed in the in the introductory part, it can be a matter of a couple of hours. I think, as in many projects, it's always a question of of getting or gathering all the all the boundary conditions correctly, and then obviously also on the on the complexity of the transmission system. Mm, makes sense. Thank you very much. Um, as I said, still lots of questions incoming. I have actually forwarded some to you guys, Simon and Mattia. Um, I don't know if there's anything else you'd like to answer right now, or if we should call it a day because we are approaching three, uh, two forty-five right now. Can you see the questions I forwarded to you? Yes, there was one whether it's possible to couple particle works with a multi body software yes this is possible and there is for example an existing co-simulation interface with a multi body software called called recordine um, which can also handle flexible bodies and then also introduce flexible bodies into the into the particle works model then one other regarding the, the post-processing maybe that should be the last one also having a look at the at the clock whether it's possible to take cut sections to to see the fluid behavior deep inside a large volume of fluid or liquid uh, yes uh, this is of course possible so since uh, Basically, the, the, the fluid is discretized by our set of particles. We can just, in the visualization, just cut away some, some particles to, to get a deeper visualization of the, of the flow also in a, in a larger amount of, of fluid. Right, wonderful. Thank you very much for taking the time to answer those additional questions. Um, I would say, having a look at the at the time, that um, this concludes our webinar for today. And I would like to once again thank all of you for your attention. And obviously, thank you, Mattia, and thank you, Simon, for the time and effort you have invested to make this webinar possible. I want to give you guys a short clap. Um, if there are any more questions from the chat that we have not yet 
answered, which I see that there are quite a few still. So I'm sorry about that. We won't be able to answer um, any more questions today. But rest assured that we will get back to you personally on those questions as soon as possible. That being said, all I have left to say, thank you, everyone. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for joining us here today. Goodbye and have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.